we've got our first bar meetup coming in two weeks on the 28th. Uh, that's going to be, it's right now scheduled to be in Hicksville. So come on down. We're going to be doing raffles, 50, 50 drawings, um, giving away autographed jerseys. And, uh, again, we're going to be doing a show. So that's also exciting. Come on down. You can talk to us at after we're in the middle of broadcast. So oh, Mikey, there's Kill, killing Anthony already here, Mikey, in the comment section, <laughs> the sarcastic Islanders are killing it. Comment. Well, unfortunately, we finally have the Islanders as the A block, uh, although they're always in the A block, but it's still. Um, but I did have a video pre preparing what they were thinking going into Tampa Bay. Is handle the puck and it's a breakaway for Barzell. Matthew Barzell in scores. Prepare to die. You know, and when I saw that breakaway goal, I thought that game was going to go completely differently. But instead, Anthony, the Islanders lose their fourth straight game after their nightmare pair of games in Florida. Um, and you know, 13 games into this season on this opening road trip, they're going to finish 5-6-2. and two. So one game under NHL 500, but they were outscored 14-2 to two in the last three games. Is there a cause for concern? Have you guys uh, ever played a, ever played a video game where you're, where like you're, you're getting through the stage or you're getting close to beat the game? And like for whatever reason, I don't know, like either the game freezes and you have to start over or, or you lose it and you just have to, you have to like make back all that progress. And when that happens, you put so much time and effort into it. You, you, you become deflated and you almost don't want to, you, you, you stop, you, you don't want to play anymore and you, and you take a break. Cause at that moment you're so far, you can't, you can't do it. Um, another analogy I got is have you ever built like a piece of furniture? You got home, you do it, you're going through all the steps. And then when you're almost done, you realize you screwed up somewhere and you either leave it as is and it won't be as good or you have to start all over. And again, you don't want to do it because you just put so much time into it. Um, and where I'm getting at is I think I think this is kind of happening to the Islanders. I think after getting to the conference finals and back to back years, um, I think there's just so much when they think about having to go through an 82 game schedule, which is a daunting task. Just to, just to get back where they were to have the opportunity, it's just so mentally tough and emotionally exhausting that I think they're not – they're just not competing at the level they need to be. I just think – they have that analogy. I just think they, they're, like, they don't want to – they don't want to – they, they don't want to do it right now. You know, it's like when you think about what they have to do, it's it's tough for them, and I, I think that's I think that's a big part of what happens to some teams when they get so close for two years in a row, um, you know, because they're they're used to playing that high emotional hockey that playoff hockey is, and when they got to go through the eighty two game regular season just to get there again, I think sometimes it's tough mentally, um, and I think they're struggling right now. They 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 don't trots yesterday in his post game used the the term. He's like I often don't call them fragile, but they're a fragile group right now. Um, and, and they are, uh, and then when you compound this with a 13 game schedule road schedule to start the year, it makes it even harder. Um, and those are the two things I think they have at play right now. Um, I mean, it's over now. They got through the, they got through the 13 game road trip. You know, some fans are saying, you know, even five, six and two, you know, I, I would have reluctantly signed up for when the season started. Um, but you know they're they're a game under 500 by NHL standards, which which isn't terrible considering what they had to do. But they didn't put they they you know put themselves in a little bit of a hole. Um, but you know kind of like we said, they're they're a really good they're a really good home team. Even at Barclays Center, which was a terrible arena for hockey, they they had success there. Um, they were great last year at the Coliseum. So hopefully, being at home, UBS Arena, the fans. 
um, you know, adding that adding that emotion to the game there uh, kind of pulls helps pull them out of this and, you know, gets them going. I've seen a couple of people say in social media today, the, the real season starts on Saturday, you know, now that they're home now, um, maybe we'll see what they're, you know, what they're really made of and this can really help them out. Um, and I will say, you know, being, being at home does play a big role. I know some people who really um, maybe not as, uh, knowledgeable at sports will say, oh, well, you know, what can the fans do? But I'm telling you, the, the the fans can when when you don't have it on a particular night, the fans can really push you over the edge. You know, them them cheering on a big hit. Um, you know, these guys are human beings. Clearly, they you know they feel that adrenaline and that, and that gets them going. So I think for once, having the home crowd behind them and cheering them on, um, I think that might give them an extra little motivation. So uh, you know, we'll see what happens uh you know i'm still really excited to be there on saturday it's going to be a historic night you know first you know brand new building in new york i know people consider metlife stadium new jersey but this is the first i mean what since yankee stadium right the first barclay new- center barclay, barclay center, center. Okay. Um, yeah and uh we'll you know, get back to that headline in a minute yeah, yeah. And by all accounts ubs arena is going to obviously be state-of-the-art um it's going to be beautiful and i'm looking forward to it but as for the play on the ice um, they're not playing Barry Trotz hockey right now, and I think uh, um, they need they need to regroup here. Obviously, you know that we'll touch on it a little bit, but the news to to Ryan Pollock being out four to six weeks uh, hurts them with a you know already uh, kind of shoddy defense that um, that will hurt them. I guess the silver lining in is it silver lining in is a, at least it's not Pellick because I think that would be more devastating if it was Adam Pellick. Yeah, um, but you know they're gonna have to. Well, Lou Lamorell has got to figure something out. Only thing is, earlier in the season, I don't know how many teams are, are willing to wheel and deal yet. So um, I don't know what's out there for him. Obviously, we're not privy to conversations that general managers have. So who knows? Maybe Especially when it's not Lou Lamarillo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, so I, I guess the most likely scenario is they recall Robin Salo, who's been, who's been very good in Bridgeport. And just from my time watching him in the preseason, um, he reminds me a lot of Devon Taves, actually with the way he skates and moves the puck. So I'm hoping, um, you know, maybe, maybe Salo jumps in and, and, you know, has success that Taves did once he became a regular and got recalled. Um, you know, that would be good. But uh, Lou has to do something here. Um, but just overall on this 13-game road trip before I hand it off to one of you guys, uh, you know, 5-6-2, and two, obviously not good. But, you know, also considering what they had to go through, um, not the worst. Uh, I would have liked, obviously, if they could have got a couple more wins. But, um, it is what it is. They're in this situation. They're going home. Um, and hopefully they, they uh, can, you know, pick up their play here. Well, when I need somebody to identify problems for any of my sports teams, I look at Mr. John Falkowski. So what do you think about the current state of the New York Islanders? They're simply not as good as a team as they were last season. There's depth missing. Uh, the defense has been a problem because of the fact that they – lost Nick Letty and it's created a big hole in their tops, uh, their top four defense. And you don't have that, that great skating. Which, by defense. the way, Anthony called that. Yeah. Well, we, I, I said that myself. I said that their, their biggest hole was going to be a top four defenseman who, and I said that during the season preview, who was going to play with Scott Mayfield. They still really haven't figured out that question. And, and Scott Mayfield hasn't looked as good because of that. And then now that they had to split up Pelican Pullock. And those two apart are not nearly as good as they are together. And Adam Pellick is still a great shutdown defender. Don't get me wrong. But if you're going to tell me that those two apart are as good as they are, are together, I have oceanfront property in Kansas to sell you because that, that, that's a crock. So you, you, you need depth on defense. They need a defenseman. They need a score. Uh, the, the, the scoring is, is just the, the, the secondary scoring on the Islanders is just terrible. I mean, where is their secondary scoring coming from right now? You're not besides you're not two games, not Brock Nelson. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you, you can talk about how Brock Nelson's having that great start to the season. And, and that's, that's great. Like you, you need him to have the start to the season that he's had nine, nine points, seven goals in 13 games. That's really good. For a guy who has never really cracked like the 60 point mark in his career, um, you want more from guys like Barzal. You want more from 
Kyle Palmieri, who got his first goal of the season last night, uh, that that's just unacceptable for him. You, you need you need more. You need a lot more. And if you're not going to get that, then you know you've got big problems. And I'm, I'm pulling up their their scoring as as we speak. And, it's going to get ugly. It, it's it's ugly. It, it it really is. Matt Barzal's got four goals and eight points in 13 games. Unacceptable for him. He needs to be a lot. To draw a point per game. Anthony Bavillier, three goals, seven points. Josh Bailey, one goal, six points in 12 games. Carl Palmieri, like I said, got his first goal of the season last night. He has six points. JG Pajot. Has, uh, Pajot has four points. And you know what? I, I did criticize when the Islanders went and got Pajot because I thought it was kind of an overkill bottom six move. But he is one of the better bottom six centers in the entire league, one of the better third line centers in the league. If you're going to have a player like him, he cannot be producing at a 35-point rate. He's got to be a 40-plus point center for this team because this team needs the offense. So you're just you're not getting it. And Zdeno Chara has just as many points as Adam Pellick and Ryan Pollock, and he's played the same amount of games as Pellick and one more game than Pollock. Like, yeah, where is, would you I say mean, that? Would you just say that Chara is not really there for points? No, he's not, and that's 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 the point. That's the entire oh. point. You you can't have your two of your top. I, listen, I know Pellick's not there for points either, but Ryan Pollock, two points, no goals, unacceptable, unacceptable. Yeah. And the biggest thing, and they pointed it out last night, last night's game, and AJ Malesko, who I absolutely love, does a great job covering the NHL, and is a has been great. I know I understand telecast for the last couple of seasons now. She pointed out that they're missing guys like Letty and Devon Taves, guys that are great skating defenders that can move the puck. So why is Robin Salo not playing? Why is Sebastian Ajo not playing when you need guys that can transport the puck? Barry. I think they're starting with their up. veterans and they're going to start moving up these rookies. They, um, Barry's got to wake up. Uh, he's going up because you know what? First, first things first, Islander fans that are on the ledge right now, relax. You're going to be fine. Um, they haven't played their the, best hockey. I know. The, the best hockey has not come. Let me go back to your analogy and the metaphor that you used before, Anthony. It's sort of like, imagine if you were up against the President's Trophy winner, you took him to a Game 7 and lost in overtime. Then the following year, you won the President's Trophy and you lost the eventual Stanley the Cup champion, your division rival, and um, all-star rival, if you want to use it as that, some guy named Sidney Crosby. And then you did it again the next year, losing to them as they watch them win a cup. And finally, the third year, you break through. What I'm trying to get at you using that metaphor you used before is Barry Trotz has been through this already with the Washington Capitals. He can easily recover and do this with the Islanders. It's a good thing that they're going home. Uh, they play 15 of their next 21 at UBS Arena. We have no idea what the effect of it is going to be like, but they're definitely going to have the adrenaline going Saturday night. They're definitely going to have the adrenaline going in the second game, or sorry, third game, which is versus the Rangers. Holy shit. Wow. They're going to go. They're going to open a new building. The next night play Toronto, and then the next night play the Rangers. And then the, the the game after that's the Bruins. They might be running on adrenaline for the next week. So um, that might be a good thing for the Islanders. But finishing, but, but finishing uh, what I was initially getting at, if they can start getting on a run, that's something. But Parise still hasn't scored. Um, their power play has been abysmal. More on that later. And we only have a couple more minutes before we have Ray Ferraro coming on, but it's, it's something that this team desperately needs to correct. A home game could help uh, playing a tomato can could really help, yeah. but it's just, they, and the Calgary flames might not be the right time at the time for them. Cause cool. last night in our group chat, I was saying that last night's game is just, it's just a day. It was a it was a day of work. You just wanted to get through as soon as they they scored four in the first period. It's just let's let's get this over with and get home because, and, and we've all been there during our work weeks where we're just like, oh yeah. god, we just get this day over. So Anthony, um, 
I got to get back to your thoughts before Ray gets on. Well, I mean, um, you know, Phil brought up a lot of good points. Uh, you know, why isn't Robin Salo playing? They they need they need a they need a, that that defenseman who can skate the puck out of trouble. Um, you know, Sebastian Aho finally did start playing. Um, and Barry ref Barry Trotz actually referenced when asked about his play, he said that he's a puck moving offensive defenseman. But when they're playing from behind as much as they are and getting pinned in their zone as much as they are, um, he hasn't really had the opportunity to, you know, to get to turn, get the puck and skate it out. It's It's been about trying to, you know, get the puck unpinned from the boards and move the puck. And they're being worked right now. So, um, you know, when they're playing from behind, he can't really utilize his skill set as, as best as he can, which is that skating. Um but, you know, Robin Sala, I, I think, would, would you know, even though he's a rookie uh, and we saw, you know, even though these highly regarded rookies don't mesh right away, like we see you guys with Niels Lundqvist, um, it's still probably beneficial to put him in because he does bring you that element that's sorely lacking. Because when you look at it, Green and Green and Char are not are not good skaters. I mean, no. Green's a little better, obviously, than Char, but that's not, that doesn't say too much. Today or uh, Char at this point has the turning radius of a school. Yes, yeah, pretty much. Right now, Patrick Nemeth looks like uh, a figure skater compared to yeah. Zeno Char. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And and even though Pelican and Pollock are good skaters. Um, Robin Salo is still more of a true puck moving faster defenseman, so they can use him. Uh, you know, I, I, I thought about uh, the trade route, but I mentioned that there's not really many guys that are available right now. Um, you know, sure, could could Lou try to go out and overpay for Gerard early? I mean, maybe, but I, I don't know if he's willing to move the assets to do that. So I'm interested to see how they handle this. You know, four to six weeks is a lot of time. Um, so we'll see what they end up doing, but um, they have to they have to at least um, recall Robin Salo. Uh, and then as far as the scoring goes quickly, um, you know, they have to they have to put more pucks in the net. Um, I know Prize mentioned he's playing well, even though he hasn't scored, which is true on the four check and all that. But at some point, guys like him, Palmieri need to start scoring more consistently. Um and I, I just think overall everyone's down on themselves. And when you're down on yourselves, that you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you know, play like you should. So they, they hopefully being at home gets them in here. But Anthony, we're gonna be cutting it off right there because it's time for us to introduce our guest. And it is a man who has got a lot of uh, of ways I can introduce you. Former Ranger, former Islander, ESPN, TSN analyst. <laughs> Mr. Ray Ferraro. Ray, thank you very much for joining us. There's a lot of formers in there. You could keep going, you know. <laughs> if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.